Joining us to talk about both special counsels, a person I know well personally, former Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. Rosenstein appointed Robert Mueller as special counsel to investigate ties between Trump's campaign and Russia. Rod, good to have you here. Thank you. Glad to be with you, Katie. Yesterday, we heard from Attorney General Merrick Garland that these are extraordinary circumstances that warrant the appointment of a special counsel. This is in January, but less than two months ago, we had a different set of extraordinary circumstances that warranted the appointment of another special counsel. Of course, that was Jack Smith, who we were just talking about. My question for you is, does Jack Smith's appointment as special counsel essentially necessitate yesterday's appointment of Rob Herr? I think it certainly put additional pressure on the attorney general to make this appointment, Katie. It's never mandatory to appoint a special counsel. That decision is always left under the regulations to the discretion of the attorney general. He needs to determine that a criminal investigation is warranted, that there's a conflict of interest or other extraordinary circumstances. And then most importantly, that the public interest calls for the appointment of a special counsel. And I think Attorney General Garland, having made the appointment of Jack Smith to investigate the Trump documents, uh, you know, put himself in a position where it would have been very difficult for him to explain a failure to do so with regard to the Biden documents. Putting on the old hat of your responsibilities at the department and stepping back into that role for a moment, would you have appointed Jack Smith? You know, Katie, uh, it's difficult to answer that question without knowing what the facts are. You know, in both of these cases, some investigation had been done before the attorney general made the appointment decision. And presumably that includes FBI agents working with federal prosecutors, conducting preliminary interviews of some of the witnesses who might have known how those documents wound up in the in the position where they found them uh, and might have known whether former President Trump or former Vice President Biden was aware of the documents. Those would be key considerations, I think, in determining whether or not the appointment was warranted. And I just don't know the answer to that. One piece of the regulations governing how special counsels work is that an attorney general is allowed to disagree or even decline to take a move recommended by the special counsel. But if he or she does so, she has to notify Congress. Are you aware of that ever happening? No, I don't believe that ever has happened. You know, there have only been two completed special counsel investigations uh, under those guidelines, the second of which was Robert Mueller. And uh, uh, in, at no point uh, did we reach a, uh, an impasse where the special counsel was recommending something and we found it necessary to overrule him. So that, uh, that point has not been reached. If it were reached under the regulation, there's an obligation to notify the Congress, but, but importantly, Katie, only at the end of the investigation. There's no obligation to keep Congress surprised in real time of those deliberations. It's at the conclusion of the investigation that the Attorney General is required to report to Congress any time in which uh, he or she has overruled the special counsel. So we're talking, going back to those extraordinary circumstances we were talking about in the beginning, we're talking about a current sitting president and the most recent sitting president, two leaders of America's biggest political parties, potential rivals in the 2024 presidential election. We've already seen political unrest. Is that something that an attorney general or prosecutor should consider, whether there will be uprising or political unrest when making a decision whether to charge someone? I think no, not not the prosecutor, at least. You know, the decision that Jack Smith and Rob Herr make should be based upon the facts, the law, and their view of appropriate Department of Justice policy. And they ought to make that recommendation as they would in the ordinary course without regard to collateral considerations, including the potential for political unrest. Now, the interesting issue is whether the attorney general should factor that into his determination. And of course, under department policy, uh, as it now exists, it always could be overruled, but department policy currently is that the department cannot indict a sitting president, so that decision point would not be reached with regard to President Biden, at least not while he's in office, uh, but it might be relevant with regard to former President Trump. And finally, you've worked closely with Rob Herr over the years, at one point appointing him as your pay dag, your top deputy at DOJ. Uh, how is your confidence in his ability to do this job? I think Rob has an ideal profile uh, to complete this assignment and to do it with appropriate uh, expertise, integrity, and independence. Uh, Rob, like many people who have been appointed to special counsels, begins the job with a superb reputation uh, as uh, being nonpartisan in the way that he enforces the law. I think that was also true at the time of their appointment for people like Ken Starr and Bob Mueller. Unfortunately, this job 
uh, just by the nature of the assignment uh, results in political controversy. So it's inevitable that there will be attacks uh, really potentially from both sides on Mr. Herr, as there have been on prior special counsels. Uh, but I think he's well positioned, given his background and experience, to withstand that mm. and to keep his focus on the things that matter in this case, the facts and the law. Former Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, thank you for joining us. You're welcome.